This is going to be a completely normal episode of Locked On MLB. One that I'm going to bring up Lee Harvey Oswald. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On Shohei Otani, formerly known as Locked On MLB. This is the daily podcast we talk about all about Shohei Otani, formerly Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I have been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade now, and I am now starting my sixth season as a host on the Locked On Podcast Network. And my sixth season, uh, apparently only talking about Shohei Otani, a man who has as many postseason games as I have, great player, and uh, monopolizing this particular show. Follow us at Lockdown MLB Pods on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully Man. Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And if you are going to be leaving any messages on any of those social media sites, Please put that hashtag everyday Sully gives us an idea of who is listening and where you are, what you are, and most importantly, why you are. And follow us at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm your pal Simon Sully Baseball on Twitter or whatever it's called now. Sully Baseball Podcast and Instagram. And this episode is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports go to prizepicks.com slash locked on mlb use code all lowercase locked on mlb for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks and before we get on with it uh let's just go let's quickly get through the trivia question uh and the trivia question we talked a bit about when we talked about the the death of Peter Angelos a little bit yesterday. Yeah, we squeezed in a tiny little thing about someone who was not named Shohei Otani. And I asked the question when Cal Ripken broke the record for the, the consecutive game record formerly held by Lou Gehrig, who was the Oriole manager. And one Horsemeyer got it correct. The Orioles manager was Phil Regan. Phil Regan. There you go. And that concludes our discussion of people not named Shohei Otani on today's episode of Locked On MLB. We're doing another live reading, and uh, our good friends over at Locked On Angels said, you missed the opportunity to call myself Paul Francis Shohei. That's right. Hey, uh, our good buddies at uh, Locked On Angels, uh, we better do a crossover soon. Who would have thought that the Angels may get the better of that deal? At least we're going to get a draft pick out of it. Yeah, I mean, look, it's too early to think about what means what, where means where, and how means how. But Shohei Otani gave a press conference today. And if the idea of the press conference was to clarify the situation, put it behind us, and put a nice little bow on, or at least give some sort of understanding to the situation... Mission failed. Mission failed. The press conference was as clear as mud. And with it, uh, the skeptic in your pal Sully came out. Now, I have to make sure that we understand what certain words mean. Unfortunately, over the last bunch of years, the word skeptic and the word cynic have become interchangeable. And that's too bad, because being skeptical is not the same as being cynical. Being cynical basically means that you think that everyone has bad intentions, you are negative about everything, and you are basically think that everyone is motivated by bad uh, actions, and you are negative, okay? That's cynical. I try not to be cynical. Sort of not about baseball because it's what gives me joy. However, as a human being, I like to think that I'm skeptical. Skeptical, the basic uh, Oxford language dictionary definition of skeptical is not easily convinced, 
having doubts or reservations. That's not the same as being cynical. That means you're not gullible. The Shohei Otani press conference brought out the skeptic, not the cynic in me. I would like to believe positive things and I would love it to rain strawberry ice cream and have nothing but unicorns dancing around my home. That means I'm not a cynic, but I am skeptical. I am not always easily convinced. And the main thing that Otani did with his brand spanking fresh out of the box interpreter next to him in that weird press conference that he gave today was that he was shocked to learn that Epe, his long-term interpreter for all these years, and best bud, absolute best buddy in the world, that Epe Mizuhara was stealing from him. He was stealing from him money and putting it into an account. And he was shocked. He had no idea it was happening. And he is a liar, and he was awful, and he was and so angry. And can we please put this behind us? No. Because there are things about that story that make absolutely zero sense. And the two main things about the story that I was skeptical about the other day, not easily convinced, sit there right now. And the first one is obvious. It is very hard to send money via wire. There are all sorts of safeguards when you do that. And when the amounts that you're wiring have two commas in it, I've never wired over a million dollars. But seeing that I have wired things over a thousand dollars, And it's kind of like a scene in one of those nuclear submarine movies where you have to have two people turn the keys simultaneously to activate the missiles. That seems to be what it takes to just sometimes use Venmo, let alone spending millions of dollars via a wire transfer. And I do not believe that you can make one of those without the person whose account it is, approving it. It's not the person uh, who has the account or their best buddy approving it. It's the person in the account. That doesn't make sense that that happened. Here's another thing that I was starting to think about yesterday, but it really came to fruition now. If Epe was indeed stealing... Now, I may, I'm not a lawyer. I want to dispel that. I have not studied law. I know rumors have gone around that I have studied law. But I was under the understanding that theft was a crime. And taking $20 out of someone's wallet is bad. Taking $4.5 million is worse and I believe is a felony. So why hasn't Epe been arrested? If he was stealing the money and they caught him stealing because they saw the wire thing, why is he not arrested? And how could he do such a wire transfer without the approval of Shohei Otani? That makes no sense. That makes zero sense. And the idea that they were trying to say, I was shocked that this was happening. I'm sorry, I couldn't help but think of the scene from Casablanca when they shut down Rick's bar and Rick asks, well, on what grounds? And Claude Rain says, I'm shocked, shocked to find there's gambling going on in this establishment. And then that dude walks up to him and says, you're winning, sir, hands him the winnings. Obviously, he wasn't shocked because he was gambling there himself. So I'm saying I was shocked to learn there was gambling going on. Wow. That doesn't pass the smell test. And this whole thing could have been avoided to a degree. The whole controversy could have been avoided. The whole thing could have been swept under the rug with a public that is very quick to forget 
and forgive if they stuck with the original story. Because as bad as the original story may have been, that is easier to explain away. But now that the new story makes no sense, and it's story number two, that's the reason why this is not going away anytime soon. Hey, fans of Daily Fantasy Sports, do I have a place for you? Prize Picks, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. This isn't you playing thousands of other players. You can pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection and watch the winnings roll in. This is the ideal time to make your picks in basketball, college, or the NBA. You want to play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like Mikil or Sugar Sean O'Malley? You can find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the Prize Picks community each week. Now, I'm going to play this week, and I have De'Aaron Fox of the Sacramento Kings. He's going to get 20 points. And then, do you know what? I think Kevin Durant is going to pull down 10 rebounds. Download the app today and use code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Once again, download the app today and use the code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube with a free Amazon Fire TV's channel apps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so... The original strategy was to say that uh, Ipe ran up a huge gambling debt and Shohei, being a hell of a guy, paid it off. Now, remember, that story, that narrative came from representatives in Shohei's camp. They were the one who put that narrative out there. And Epe went out there to face the music, say, yeah, yeah, I'm a degenerate gambler. There you go. Because he was the patsy. He was going to take the fall. He was going to get fired. He was going to take the blame. The storyline was the best bud of Shohei was a degenerate gambler. And Shohei paid it off. And he was probably going to be fired. And then say, hey, just, just hang tight. Hang tight. Everyone's memories are short. In a matter of months, no one even remember anything, and you're still you'll still be on the payroll, maybe in some shell company. But we'll take care of you. Don't worry. You take the fall, and we'll take care of you. Fine. And then he does the ninety minute interview on ESPN that was set up by Shohei's people, and then they said, "No, that's not what happens. He's a, he's a thief." And all these articles start coming out about how Epe is this big old liar. He's like, he's like a con man. He's like Leonardo DiCaprio and catch me if you can. And that he claimed he went to the University of California at Riverside. But Riverside, we never heard of him. He claimed to be uh, Okajima's uh, 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 interpreter when he was a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox, we never heard of this guy. Oh, my God, he's a con artist. He managed to con the brilliant Shohei Otani. It's a whole fire festival thing going on. This guy tricked them. He swindled them. He Bernie made off the couple of million dollars away from Shohei. That was the new thing. He's a thief who somehow wiretapped out of his or wire transferred out of Otani's account and isn't arrested. It's because probably someone whispered in the Otani camp's ear, hey, if you do this, then you are saying that Otani paid off an illegal gambling ring, and that's going to put him in line for a suspension. That's probably what someone whispered in their ear. I don't know that for a fact, but here's what I do know for a fact. The Otani camp came up with the he's paying off his friend's debts and the theft story. 
That's why this isn't going to go away. Because they're the ones who came up with two different stories. And the second one is a lot dumber than the first. If they had said that first story, I gambled a lot and Otani picked up the tab. I think I'd believe that. The cynic in me would say, yeah, I bet he has a sycophant friend. And probably pile up a bunch of debts. Otani is probably a, a, a gullible friend in that way, or has a blind spot as a friend there. And he gets a little rap on his knuckle, a fine from Major League Baseball, has to do a couple of PSAs. And by the end of the week, we would have forgotten it. Absolutely by the end of the week, we'd have forgotten it because the games would have started. That's one of the reasons why this is snowballing. There's no other games going on. But the games would have started. Oh, what happened there? Oh, his friend ran up a big, big thing. They fired him. Otani was a bit of a schmuck, and he learned his lesson. Would have been done by Friday. But now we have the story that doesn't make any sense. And they're expecting this guy, Epe, to be the patsy. Like Lee Harvey Oswald when he screamed, I'm just a patsy. That there was probably something else going on, and he was the one taking the fall. Now, I don't know who the Jack Ruby is in this situation. You know you're in a bad baseball situation when you're bringing up Lee Harvey Oswald. But they're now having to paint him as a fink, as a con artist, as a thief. And we'll probably still have him say, We've got, we'll take care of you. We'll take care of you. But it's the changing of the story. There being there is dishonesty going on. And the dumbest thing was said in the press conference was said that Otani didn't know what was happening. And that the that Epe came up, told us, oh, this is what was going on, and they gave the press conference. And one of the spokespeople said, oh, yeah, we believed him when we sent him off to interview with the biggest sports uh, network in the world. And then it turned out afterwards we found out he was lying. Really? You would send him to be interviewed to tell the story, and it didn't occur to you to ask Shohei Otani, hey, what he just said, is, is that what really happened? Really? You didn't even think, hey, run this by Shohei. Seeing that he's the nucleus of this absolutely gigantic galaxy of money that is flowing from Japan into Los Angeles through all the baseball. You never thought to do that? Or which one makes more sense? That he told a lie, Epe told a lie, Otani's entire team believed him, never thought to check with Shohei, sent him in front of the cameras, and then found out that he was lying. Does that make sense? Or does it make sense that after the interview, someone basically said, hey, wait a minute, this gets Shohei in potential trouble. Which version makes more sense? I am skeptical that nobody asked Otani. I am skeptical that the story changed from something that was, hey, kind of whimsical in its own way. Hey, he's got a guy. He, he's a, a, a sycophant, a remora on the shark of Shohei Otani. And piled up gambling debts. Otani bailed him out. Uh, don't do it that way, Shohei. Don't do it that way. Or he lied, somehow wired this money, and uh, none of us knew it. And uh, please, please don't ask us any more questions. The second story doesn't make sense. And it's the second story. And folks, that's why this isn't going to go away. Stick to the first one. In so many ways, that's the admission that this is a lie. And with that, it brings up a very cynical point of view that I have of what I think is ultimately going to happen. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing 
on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You could even pick who's going to win it all. Is it going to be Washington State? Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. That's FanDuel. Let's talk a little bit about Locked On Sports Today. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. That's my 40s announcer voice on YouTube. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV and the Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today, here for you 24-7. Covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. I was looking at one of the pictures of the press conference of Otani and the interpreter who he does not know. And it's in front of a blue backdrop because it's the Dodgers. And they had the Dodger logo on there. But there was also Toyo Tires and Daiso, D-I-S-O with this little chevron that they have next to it. Uh, if you don't know what Daiso is, it is a supermarket chain, and uh, or it's kind of like Target, I guess, in Japan. And basically, the they were selling space in the background of the press conference. Toyo Tires, they're, bought, they're selling space there. They can't have an inch without selling space and making a little money off of this guy. That is why he's not going to face any real consequences and why they should have just stuck to the first story. He is a cash machine. He is an ATM for baseball right now. And so naturally, they're not going to do anything drastic to him. They can't afford to. Now, by the way, if it turns out that he decides to retire from baseball and he winds up playing with the L.A. Clippers for a, you know, a year and a half and then comes back to baseball, a la Michael Jordan with the White Sox, then I think we know the best way to handle the best players in a particular sports tied up in gambling. However, that is the reason why they just should have stuck to the original story. Because there's so much money coming in. By the time the opening day begins, no one would care. But now it's going to go on, and the feds are probably going to get involved. And do you know who the pressure is on big time right now? Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts has to take this ship and the firestorm that's going to come about. And the fact that it was already going to be a media circus around Shohei Otani no matter what. But that was when it was going to be positive. Now it's going to be negative, and no one was expecting this. And Otani didn't have a lot of pressure when he was playing in that parking lot in Anaheim because the Angels sucked. And so it wasn't like a lot of attention was going to be on Otani and the pressure that the Angels are going to feel as they try to win the division. They didn't win the division. They didn't come close. They didn't have a winning record when he was there. But now there's going to be a huge amount of attention. And we're not going to bring about if Yamamoto doesn't pay it out well. I think everyone's got to pump the brakes a little bit. Yamamoto had one start, okay? A lot of pitchers have terrible starts and go on to have very fine seasons. One of the seasons where Roger Clemens won the Cy Young Award with the Red Sox, he got off to a rocky start, didn't make the All-Star team, had a losing record at the All-Star break, went on to win the Cy Young Award. It happens. Everyone relax, pump the brakes. Yamamoto should be fine. But will the Dodgers be fine? This is a Dodger team that is World Series title or bust. And now they're starting the season. The only reason they're not 0-2 is because the first baseman of the Padres has a terrible glove. And if another team should take advantage, I didn't pick the I didn't pick the Dodgers to win the pennant this year. There are some other teams that I don't think we win as many games as the Dodgers in the regular season, but could certainly beat them in the regular, in the postseason. Who had the Diamondbacks beating them last year? And so the Dodgers have to go all the way, and Dave Roberts has to shield this team from awfulness. 
If not, his job is done. It's D-U-N done. I know I spelled that wrong. And so he has to now navigate these waters and has to do it skillfully. The last time we saw a team have to navigate waters like this were the Houston Astros. Now, granted, that was a different situation. They had cheated in one of the tightest World Series we've had in recent years, therefore giving them a slight edge. And there was a whole year of buildup to boo them because we found out after the 2019 season and nobody was in the stands for 2020. So there was a whole year to build up the boos there. But now there's going to be a big target on Otani's back. He's the highest paid player. And a lot of times being the highest paid player means you're going to get a lot of unwanted attention. And now the fact that the, you're going to see Mookie Betts and Shohei Otani and Freddie Freeman, and all of them in the same team, they're expected to win 130 games and sweep the World Series. No pressure. And the fact that we're saying Otani bets, and we're not talking about the order of the lineup, but we're asking a reasonable question, that's part of the problem too. I can't wait to start talking about games. I can't wait to start talking about, you know, what's going on in baseball. The Rockies extended uh, Ezekiel Tovar. That's a really smart move. Looks like we're going to probably have uh, Jordan Montgomery sign with the team pretty soon. I think it's probably going to be the Yankees, but there you go. Um, but there, but we got to talk about this because that's what's going on. I'm going to throw out the trivia question. I'm going to carefully word it. There, which current franchise, franchise, which current franchise has never won a home World Series game? However has won a World Series title. What team, current franchise, has never won a home World Series game, but has won a World Series? That's your trivia question for today. Uh, a little preview for coming up in the day after tomorrow. Uh, we have the author of, of the book, uh, Roy White from Compton to the Bronx, uh, by Dr. Paul Semendinger, who wrote this with Roy White, the great uh, Yankee legend. We had a wonderful conversation. It's going to be a two-part episode. Uh, if you're a baseball fan of the of the 70s, you'll love it. If you want to know the person who is the connective tissue from Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle all the way to Derek Jeter and Mariano Rivera, that person is named Roy White. It was a very interesting conversation. Part one of it is coming in a couple of days. And then we're going to have the game starting up for real. Talking once again about Shohei Otani. This has been Locked On Shohei Otani. I am your host, Paul Francis Otani. Please, please call me Shohei. <laughs>